Section 5.4, Law of Cosines, um, we're going to consider an oblique triangle, which just means we don't have any right angles. Just like Law of Sines. So these are the special cases when we don't have right angles. Um, so we have sides A, B, C, and angles alpha, beta, gamma, or again, I don't, I'm okay if you use capital letters, A, B, C. So you can see a triangle um, on the right. Right, A is opposite A, C opposite C, right, B opposite B. Um, so we're gonna use law of cosines when we in these two cases. If we know all three sides, we call that side, 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 or we know two sides and the included angle. So when I say that, that means we know, as we go around the triangle, we know a side, angle, side. So this is the included angle. So it's a little bit different than the law of sine cases. So it's the angle in between. All right. So we will then use the law of cosines to solve the remaining parts. So before I introduce um, the formula, uh, let me show you why law of cosines doesn't work. So there's two reasons it doesn't work. Um, law of sines either doesn't have enough information um, or sometimes we have issues with the supplement and law of cosines um, can kind of solve for those angles. And so let's see what I mean by that. So consider sine of 30 and sine of 150. So 30 degrees is in the first quadrant and then 150 is in the second quadrant and it has the same value for sine. They're both at one half. But if we were to type sine inverse of one half, um, oops, yeah, sine inverse of one half on the calculator. The calculator tells us 30 degrees because that's the value that's in the range of sine inverse of x. And so maybe the angle's actually 150, right? But sine inverse won't tell us that. So we'd have to figure that out on our own, um, right? And again, so here's my sine inverse. Remember sine inverse, we had a domain from negative pi over two or negative 90 to pi over two or 90. So sine inverse is really only gonna give me angles in these two quadrants, but what if my angle is in this quadrant? So if we have an angle in quadrant two, we have a little bit of issues. So we're gonna think about this as we do examples. Um, and this could happen right when we have obtuse angles. Acute angles are okay, because those are less than 90 degrees. So sine inverse will find acute angles, but it won't find obtuse angles. And so that'll be an issue if my angle is actually 150. And so law of cosines solves this problem because law of co uh, cosine inverse, right? Remember the range was from zero degrees to 180 degrees or zero to pi. And so, Law of cosines can find acute angles, which are less than 90 degrees, or obtuse angles, which are greater than 90 degrees. And we don't have to worry about the third or fourth quadrant because triangles right are less than 180. So we don't have to worry about down there. Uh, so let's check out law of cosines and then talk about some issues with the um, bigger angles as we go through examples. So law of cosines, it's an ugly formula. Um, there's three versions, they're all doing the same thing. Um, but we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of a. So you'll notice the angle matches the one on the outside. Um, so b squared, and then notice the sides switch a little. We have a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b, and then similar for c squared. So it just kind of depends what information we have on which one we'll choose. So we'll just see that as we go through an example. So let's try example one. I'll go ahead and copy the paste of the formulas so we can decide which one to use. Oops. All right. um, so we have an, a triangle. Um, we have alpha or A is 65. So 65 degrees. We know B is five, so we'll make that opposite B. And then C, little c is eight, so that's opposite of C. And this would be a side angle side. So this will be law of cosines. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna use the first version 
because we know B, we know C, and then we know angle A. So depending on what information is given, I would hop between the two. So let's go ahead and start solving. So we have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times cosine of 65 degrees, or if cosine of A, we'll plug it in a second. So we get 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 times cosine of 65 degrees. So 5 squared plus 8 squared um, times 2 times 5 times 8, all times cosine of 65. Let's get rid of all that stuff. Um, double check that you're in degrees. So let's check that. So you'll have a mode button somewhere. Yeah, so I'm in degrees. And I get a squared is 55.19. And so we'll go ahead and square root that to find a. So square root of 55.19. And I get a is about 7.43. So we've solved one piece of the triangle. So now we need to find the two angles, b and c. So there's two options. You can use law of cosines. Law of cosines is safe, um, but messy, right? This formula is messy. So option one is use law of cosines. If you use law of cosines, you don't have to worry about, any, about acute or obtuse. Um, option two is use law of sines, but we have to worry about what I in, talked about a few minutes ago. Um, if we have an obtuse angle, we're in trouble. So we have to check for obtuse. So the way to do this is you just solve for the smaller angle, right? You can only have one obtuse angle. And so if you only have one, um, that would have to be the biggest one. So we just solve for the smaller angle instead. So as long as you solve for the smaller angle, you can use law of sines. And so that's nice because it's faster. Um, if you use law of cosines, you do not have to worry about this. So how do I know which one's smaller? Um, the one with the smaller side. So B equals five and C equals eight. So that means B is the smaller angle. So it has to be acute. And then C is larger. So we don't know, it could be obtuse. So we can't use law, so we're not gonna solve for C. We're gonna solve for B instead, because then we don't have to worry about this issue here. The 30 degrees versus 150 degrees, right? Law of signs would tell me 30 when it's actually 150, and we just would make a mess of it. So we're not gonna solve for the larger angle to avoid that issue. So we use law of signs, but we're gonna solve for B because B is smaller. B is not always the smaller one, right? It's smaller because the side B is smaller. All right, so let's use law of sines. So we get sine of A over A, oops, little a. And then we're gonna ignore the C, so we're gonna use sine of B over B. Again, because B is the smaller angle. So sine of A, A was 65 over A, which is 7.43 sine of b and b was five times by five times by five pull out the calculator five times sine of 65 divided by 7.43 if you use law if you decided to use law of cosines because you didn't want to deal with this acute obtuse issue you will get the same answer except rounding might be a tiny bit off but it should otherwise be the same so you get 609, uh, 89, let's see, 898 equals sine of B. I just use a lot of decimal places. We can go ahead and do sine inverse, sine inverse. 
And I'll just do second ANS because then I can use all the decimal places. And I get 37.58 degrees. Again, if you ended up using law of cosines, you're going to get about the same. But rounding might be slightly, slightly off. I think I got 37.6 with law of cosines. Um, but again, law of cosines was more work if you decided to try it. So law of sines is fine as long as you solve for the smaller angle. So very, very, very important. If you don't identify which one's smaller, then you have to use law of cosines. All right, and then the reason we don't need to worry about law of sines or cosines anymore is all the angles add up to 180. So we'll always just do 180 minus the other two angles for the last one. So minus 65 minus 37.58. And we don't have to worry about acute or obtuse because the angles always add up to 180. So for the third angle, I will always do this. And I get 77.42. So just always subtract from 180 to find the last one. And so it ended up, this one is also acute because it's less than 90 degrees. So it wouldn't have been an issue in this problem, but we wouldn't have known. So solve for the smaller angle if you continue with law of sines. If you don't want to worry about that again, just use law of cosines. It's just a little bit more work mathematically. So I'll see you back for example two.